One viewer wants to know, do women seem to be more prone to false doctrine than men are? It's an interesting question. I have my answer coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. Give me the gospel, don't give me gimmicks. Yeah, that's a great mug, isn't it? Drinking a little Headbangers Brew in there, our very own blend, our very own, uh, not just blend, but we have Headbangers Brew. Nine different blends. This is the recent one. It's called Jamaican Me Looney. Want to get loony? This is the coffee. <laughs> that and all of our mugs, our t-shirts, our posters right here. We are metal. We are family. Dot com. You know, I also want to announce, if you haven't heard yet, that my new book is out. It's the devotional edition of Seriously, a book that I actually wrote in 2015. And uh, this is updated. It's got uh, some things to think about every day, some scriptures to for further study. It's got all of that in it. And uh, just a great, great book. And I'm hoping that it does well because I wrote it for you. Letters to myself at 21. Things that I wish I would have been able to tell myself way back then. And this is the 50th anniversary of my 21st birthday this year. And some great things I would love you to know about life, about so many things right here. And uh, we will very soon in the next couple of days have this book for you um, in our store as well. But right now you can get it wherever books are sold. In our store, we'll have it available and I'll sign it to you. I'd love to do that. And there we go. Dear Pastor Bob, I don't mean this in a sexist manner, but are women more prone to false doctrine than men? I ask because it seems like women chase after false doctrine more than men do. Is there any truth to this? The Bible does say that it was Eve who was deceived and not Adam. It also seems like many women false teachers are on the rise as of late. Do you have any thoughts or opinions on this? And how do we handle this as a church? It's a loaded question and... Uh, Gosh, I, I kind of feel like it's one of those questions that I could get in trouble no matter what I say. Yeah, because, you know, we all feel like we have we all have strong opinions on this one, it feels like. And our opinions, you know, from very well-meaning people can, you know, have some truth based on people they know. And everyone knows someone who has maybe gone into false doctrine, male or female, and some say, no, more of my male friends are into false doctrine, or my female friends are, so it must be female. And a lot of it's based on experience in your personal life and what you've seen. But what about the balance in this? You know, I, I think one of the problems in our society and one of the problems in church today is that we really, really don't have balance. There is such a need, folks, to understand the differences between men and women, between male and female, so different in so many ways. And all you have to do is get married to find that out. Yeah. Not only do you have differences because you have different personality types, but also because you're male and female. And... Uh, Every group, male or female, bring a strength to the church and to any relationship. You know, the Bible doesn't say that either one has superior wisdom or superior understanding. Doesn't happen. But how we use our wisdom and understanding and, and how we balance each other with it and not dominate each other, but balance each other with it is so important. 
Here's a scripture I'd like to go to today, and it's found in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28. And it says, there is now no distinction in regard to salvation, but it also applies to other things too. Now, this is talking about salvation. I'm pulling it out of context just a little bit to prove a point. There is now no distinction in regard to salvation, neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you who believe we are all one in Christ Jesus, no one can claim a spiritual superiority. That's our foundation. No one can claim a superior, uh, superior, a, a spiritual superiority in salvation, but we can't claim it in anything else either. That's the thing that matters the most. If you can't claim it there, you really can't claim it anywhere. Now, let me just say, folks, that many people feel superior, not just because they're men or women, because they just have that feeling about themselves that they are superior and everyone else seems to be inferior. People who struggle with narcissism, uh, just different personality types have that feeling. It lets you know that you're not as smart as they are. You're not superior as they are. And we all know that. And there are men and there are women who struggle with this too. And, uh, and we're gonna talk about experience. I would say that I know more men than women to struggle with it. You may have a different experience than I do. But folks, within all of our groups, there are so many different kinds of people, so many different kinds of personalities. And you cannot base male, female dominance or pre precedence or, you know, superior wisdom on your own experiences with your limited group. That's important. I'm so happy that the Bible says that we work at this together. Now, the Bible does talk about a chain of command. That's a different thing. It doesn't have to do necessarily with false prophecy, although it could, but it has to do with the chain of command as God begins to put order into the church and especially into the family. Not talking about superiority, not talking about one is better than the other, just talking about this is how things work. This is what will bless you the most. And of course, anything that God tells us is for your blessing and mine. That's important. Folks, I could spend so long on this subject, really could. And I don't feel like in just a few minutes here that I have done it justice. And uh, I, it would take so long to do that and if we ever have a really long podcast, maybe we'll do that again. But folks, this is the foundation. And uh, go back and read that. Galatians three, twenty-eight, And I think you'll find that there's some great, great wisdom there, especially in Galatians 3. Folks, don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing. Hello, Metal Family. So I'm excited for the next Immortal Fest. Such great bands, such great people. I hope you're going to be one of them. I'll be there hosting both events this summer. Really excited to spend time with the bands and to spend time with you. Sunday at the first event on the 28th of July will be the Sanctuary Day. We're going to have a service. We're going to have our worship team. We're going to have some special guests. We're going to have a good time. And I hope that you plan to come and some surprises still to come too. So both events, 1st of July, 26th to 28th, and the other the first week of September. Great bands, great time together, family time. We are metal, we are family. I hope to see you there.